वेलकम वन एंड ऑल टू दिक्स एपिसोड ऑफ गूंज टूडे स्टोरी इज वन ऑफ दो स्टेल्स विच मेक यू लीव द रेलम ऑफ द नोन एंड पुश यू इन टू अ लैंड विद अ लाइन बिटवीन रियालिटी एंड फिक्शन आ ब्लर्ड अ प्लेस वे यू क्वेश्चन योर सेल्फ Welcome on board the train at 12:05 a.m. The year was 1997. The digital clock of the platform glowed deep blood red. Roshni walked across the station impatiently. Roshni's hands and feet twitched with irritation. Her train was almost an hour late. It had been 1 month since she had been living in a remote village on the outskirts of Mumbai. A month since she had been appointed as the head of the local government bank there. She was tired at the end of the day. and the sounds of the station master snoring away in his cabin definitely wasn't helping she didn't like this place but she didn't love her dad either on the contrary she didn't want to meet him work at the bank was a great distraction from the ties with a so called family roshni picked up the call hello who's this It's me, Chacha ji. It's your dad. Her uncle had called her up. Her dad's right half was completely paralyzed. Her uncle informed. The doctor said he had very little time left. She still wondered why she had agreed to return to Mumbai. They said it was the right thing to do to visit the old man probably for the very last time but her heart did not want to visit that house the house which she refused to call home all her thoughts faded away as the train approached with its horn blaring drowning away all the other sounds of the night <sighs> finally roshni sighed Roshni boarded the dingy non-AC sleeper coach of the train but not before giving one last look at the blood red digital clock of the platform which slowly ticked from 12:04 to 12:05 like an omen of ill fate The bogey felt like a different world altogether, as if as if it belonged to a most sinister realm. The coach smelt of rot mixed with urine and sweat. Roshni wondered as to how she was going to spend a night with the stink on board. The moonlight lit the brownish yellow cabin up as Roshni stumbled along the narrow aisle, searching for a berth. Roshni climbed up to a middle berth which had a brownish metal label on it. It read 13. While lying on a berth, her gaze fell onto a fellow passengers on the opposite berths. On the upper berth lay a bearded man. His build was gigantic and drool trickled down his lips onto his pillow. On the lower berth lay a young woman in a sari who slept peacefully. On the middle berth lay a little girl with her eyes wide awake. The moonlight shone on her face as she, with her hazel eyes, peered into Roshni's. She she must be around nine or ten years old. Roshni thought to herself. Her little lips curved into an innocent smile as she looked at Roshni. Roshni couldn't help but smile back. 
It's it's strange how a simple twist of the lip can say so much without saying nothing at all. A storm is coming. These were our last thoughts before a body finally gave way to slumber. Roshni woke up with a jolt and she looked to the right. Roshni's eyes slowly moved down from the upper berth to the lower. The upper berth was empty and all that lay was a crumpled bed sheet and a pillow. But what she saw in the middle berth was something that was all too familiar and made Roshni freeze where she lay. The young girl lay there frozen with a huge hairy hand covering her mouth as all her screams for help were unheard. He clasped her mouth with his right hand while his left hand violently shuffled beneath a little kurti like an, like an enormous python strangling its helpless prey. Her other hand stretched towards her mother as she tried to reach her. The man looked at the little creature with an inhuman hunger. A hunger which Roshni was acquainted with when she was nine by none other than her own father. <laughs> Roshni's body froze as she watched her own past play out in front of her. She remembered her father almost choking her and twisting her limbs. She felt like a helpless puppet entangled in strings. Roshni broke out of this trance which had been plaguing her mind for the last 18 years of her life. She got up from her birth, made her way to the man and gave him a hard push on the chest, separating him from the child. This move surprised the huge man as Roshni panted heavily while she held the little girl's hand. What Roshni witnessed next is something which can scarcely be termed as human. The man's laugh slowly turned into a monstrous screech. His black pupils turned to pale yellow slits which peered at Roshni. That's when... That's when Roshni felt it. Roshni's wrist throbbed with pain as if a thousand needles pierced her skin. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. The fragile girl who she swore to save bit into her wrist as her eyes turned bloodshot and a smile curved upwards, revealing a rows of jagged teeth. Her body cracked and contorted as, as, as she slowly turned into something different. Anything but human. She resembled a hyena with flesh between its teeth and, and Roshni could sense the foul smell trailing from her skin. And at that moment, she yanked her hand away. The creature, which was once the little girl, gnawed at the piece of flesh dislodged from Roshni's wrist. One by one, all the passengers started to turn. Their flesh stretched and their howls and screeches filled the length and breadth of the train. Yellow and red eyes peered at Roshni hungrily as the, as the train had suddenly become a creature in its own right. And it decided to engulf Roshni without a trace. The creatures swung from their berths with their unearthly moans as Roshni ran as fast as her legs could carry towards the entrance. The creatures tried to cling on to Roshni as they clawed and gnawed at her skin, but Roshni didn't give up. She had decided she wouldn't yield. Not this time. Roshni punched and fought her way through the hood as the train slowed down to a halt. Roshni made her way to the exit, yanking multitudes of creatures, big and small. Roshni's body slammed against the hard platform as she jumped from the train. The creatures peered at her, hungrily, with their unblinking yellow and red eyes as their tongues slithered past the bars of the window. They gazed at Roshni like predators. Predators who were deprived of their hunt.
The next morning when Roshni woke up to the sound of the birds in the station master's cabin, all of this seemed like a distant dream. But when she saw the multitude of bandages on her and could smell the ointment of her wounds, she realized that she had actually lived and fought through the hellish nightmare. The station master explained, Madam, people say that 13 years ago, there was a train which carried prisoners from one prison to another. Rapists, murderers, the worst of the worst. They say to escape prison, the prisoners struck a deal with the devil and they are paying for it to this very day. You are extremely lucky, madam. Nobody, nobody has ever escaped from such an incident. But Roshni knew better that day as to why the train left her for dead. The train toyed with her like a predator toys with its prey for sport, to cherish its pain and suffering. Although she had escaped the train physically, a part of Roshni's soul was stuck in the train forever. She could still hear the wild screams and smell the stink of their skin in her dreams. She had become the living legacy of the train at 12.05. The Train at 12.05 AM Written and directed by Rohitendra Chatterjee Voice artists Rachid Daruka, Abhimanyu Pawar, Shromona Bhomik and Ayan Khan Sound recordist Yash Govius Sound editor Saranj Rungta Special thanks to Laili Datta and Bhaskar Roy Stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you.